Welcome to Inorganic Chemistry. In this chapter, we're going to learn about solid state chemistry. For the first part, we're going to look at the solid structures for a number of simple compounds, uh, including metals and ionic solids. And to do that, we'll start with the concept of close packing. We'll also look at uh, how to uh, understand these structures using and predict structures using radius ratio rules and uh, defects in solid structures. Uh, we'll all conclude the chapter discussing the bonding for solids including ionic bonding and band theory which is used to explain semiconductors and is al also as some theory about superconductors. So as uh, Spinoza has said, nature abhors a vacuum. And he was talking about political structures, but it turns out this also applies to nature um, of atomic structures. So um, atoms, given the choice, a lower energy state will get close together to form bonds, and we call that the close packed structure. And in one dimension, uh, if you assume atoms are hard spheres, and then you've actually seen this, uh, for example, in the, the grocery store when they stack spherical objects like oranges or apples, then these spheres will pack in a hexagonal layer. So filled hexagons uh, of solid spheres will pack this way. So that's the the basis of the close pack structure. And then there's uh, different ways to stack these layers. If we assume position one is, uh, we call it A, and then the next layer is in a, a different position, position B, and then if we come back, the third layer is lined up with the first layer, so it's position A again. That is actually the hexagonal close pack structure, or HCP. And the unit cell is shown here. All these structure uh, images were generated using the diamond uh, software. And you can see it's kind, of, it's kind of tilted the unit cell, so you can see there's these hexagons of spheres, but then the next layer isn't quite filled in. There's some some missing hexagons in the next layer, or mi missing atoms because the, the layer shifted over, and then the top layer and bottom layer though are lined up. So that's a hexagonal um, close packing. Another uh, option would be instead of going back on the third layer to position A, we go to a, an additional layer, position C, and then back to position A. And that results in cubic close packing, or face-centered cubic structure. And here you see a, the cube with, there's atoms in the faces of the cube, so that's the face-centered cubic structure. But I've tilted it so you can see the layers of the atoms, A, B, C, A. These are the hexagonal pack layers that are diagonal to the actual cube there. So metals uh, will often, pure metals at low temperature will often assume one of these two structures, HCP or CCP. Also uh, other, other elements and alloys, some alloys will, will uh, assume these, these forms. Now, uh, if we want to do chemistry, we're going to mix elements so we won't have pure metals. And so the next section we'll talk about how to handle um, binary or even ternary compounds with more than more than one type of element. So to understand or, or kind of organize these structures, we're going to start with the close packing. And notice that here's a, here's a um, triangle from that hexagonal layer of, of close packed spheres. And then the, the next layer is up here and I've, I've made it smaller so we can see that there's an opening here between these four spheres and a small opening and, and we could put another different color, different type of sphere in this 
in this opening and that is considered a tetrahedral hole that that small sphere there has coordination number of four and I've uh, drawn this uh, the tetrahedron there so you can see that so we could have um, two different elements one close packed the other filling tetrahedral holes in the same way we could have again the close pack spheres layer here and then here's another layer of close pack spheres and you can see they're offset so that results in a, a different type of hole here uh, where we could put a small atom or ion and this has a octahedral shape you can kind of see that shaded here an octahedron uh, this central atom has coordination number of six and so we can also understand uh, or make binary compounds by putting a small atom in octahedral holes. The octahedral holes are larger than the tetrahedral holes. So here we see a summary uh, chart of these binary ionic compounds um, and even some a ternary compound here. The name of the structure type, the sample um, compound that has this type, or, or so we call it the archetype, and then how, how to understand it. So sodium chloride is made of the anions. The chlorides are in a cubic close pack structure and all the octahedral holes are filled with the sodium ions and then this is the coordination number of the different ions in the structure. So let's go through that. Here is the unit cell of the rock salt uh, lattice which is um, the archetype again is the sodium chloride and you can see the sodium chloride um, you can see here's the uh, the key here actually it's saying that the sodium ions are here at face center cubic and the chloride ions are in here you can see the octahedral hole see this coordination number of six making octahedron there okay so uh, it turns out you could with rock salt structure you can either way the sodium can be in the center or the chloride can be in the center and applications of this structure are the silver chloride is is another compound that assumes this rock salt structure and it's important in photographic paper and so the crystal face crystal geometry uh, determines the sensitivity of the photo paper okay uh, to continue our AB type compound, the zinc blend structure and the archetype is the zinc zinc sulfide. And so here you see um, zinc. Again, this is kind of backwards than usual, but zinc ions in the face center cubic. <coughs> and the sulfide ions in tetrahedral holes and you can see that with the bonds uh, drawn in there you can see that that's coordination number four and that's a tetrahedron. Uh, again we could shift the unit cell the way we draw it and the zinc ions also have coordination number four so we could shift the sulfides to the faces and zinc blend structures are uh, very common in uh, semiconducting materials such as gallium arsenides which are used in light emitting diodes. <laughs> to continue our AB type structures, um, we, we saw with sodium chloride or rock salt the octahedral holes filled. Um, nickel arsenide also has octahedral holes filled but now the uh, ions are in <coughs> a hexagonal close pack structure you can see this unit cell is not a cube it's it's a piece of a hexagon here and of course the archetype for nickel arsenide would be nickel arsenide uh, and here we see nickel ions <coughs> in hexagonal close packed and arsenide ions in um, octahedral holes and you can see with the bonds drawn in that's coordination number of six 
and um, important application of this uh, is uh, nickel sulfide, another uh, like nickel arsenide. This is the major ore or for nickel source of nickel that we use, uh, including our nickel coins. So this uh, changing the lattice from cubic close pack to hexagonal close pack introduced what's called polymorphs or another shape for the crystal. So wurtzite is a mineral that actually is zinc sulfide. So it's the same um, composition as zinc blend, but it has a different structure. So it's a polymorph. Um, and here we see, uh, I've drawn it such that the sulfide ions now are hexagonal close packed. You can see that nice hexagon there. And the zinc ions are in half of the tetrahedral holes. So you can see that tetrahedron, the way it's drawn there. Um, and there's a layer of them here, a layer of them down here, but not a layer here, not a layer here. So only half of the tetrahedral holes are filled. And uh, again, this is a common structure for semiconductors, cadmium selenide, or yeah, uh, photoconductors, photocells are, um, have this structure. <clears throat> now, we've been using close packing to try to understand um, the structures, and here is an example, though, of a compound that is not close packed, cesium chloride, which uh, the archetype is cesium chloride, and the chlorides are a simple cubic can see they just form a little cube here and the cesium ion is in a cubic hole and because um, you can see it's surrounded by a cube and the coordination number for the, the cesium then is one two three four five six seven eight so we didn't talk about that before but cubic holes have a coordination number of eight and um, this is a, a common uh, form for, for alloys, uh, nickel tin alloy is called memory metal and is used in uh, surgical stints, for example. Okay, uh, now let's do an AB2 type compound. So again, it's still binary, two different elements, but the formula calcium fluoride, two two anions to one cation and uh, this is the archetype calcium fluoride and again this is a little different than what we've seen before because the cations are in the face center cubic arrangement and the anions the fluorides here fill all the tetrahedral hole. So you can see it's a tetrahedron and there's another one there, another one there, another one there. So unlike the wurtzite uh, where, where we saw just a, a layer of the tetrahedral holes filled and then empty tetrahedral holes, all the tetrahedral holes are filled. Um, and this particular compound, calcium fluoride, is the state mineral of Illinois and is an important source of fluoride that we use in, in drinking water and toothpaste and things like that. We can um, have the opposite structure where anions are in the face center cubic, cations are in all the tetrahedral holes. That's called the anti-fluorite structure and an example of that is magnesium Silicide. Okay, uh, another example where the uh, AB2 type structure is rutile, and rutile has uh, is the archetype 
uh, is the mineral actually, titanium dioxide. And here the oxides are in um, hexagonal close packing, which you can't quite see with the way this unit cell is drawn. I tried to tilt it so you can see the layers here. And the titanium, uh, you can see, is in a octahedral hole, but only half of the octahedral holes are filled. So there's there's not one here, for example. There's not one here. Um, and if you look closely, you see that this, this octahedron is actually distorted. These bonds are longer than these bonds. And when we study uh, the transition metal chemistry, we'll, we'll understand why there's this distortion. And uh, titanium dioxide is an important compound. It's used as the white base in modern paints, which replaced a lead-based compound. So uh, you can thank rutile for um, improved uh, health. Another compound, uh, not close-packed base, but the AB2 type compound is the molybdenum sulfide uh, compound. And the archetype is the uh, molybdenum sulfide, MOS2. Here you can see the sulfides are in um, close-packed layers, but they're directly on top of each other, A, A, B, B in the unit cell. So instead of A, B, A or A, B, C, A, it's A, A, B, B. Um, so it's not, not, not close-packed here, it is close-packed here. And the molybdenum ions are in a trigonal prismatic coordination hole. So if we look here, we can see that this atom is right above this atom. And so it's a trigonal prism, or commonly called prism, um, which has a coordination over six, but it's shifted from an octahedron. And molybdenum sulfide is an example of a um, layered compound. These Between these layers are just van der Waals attractions for these sulfides, and so the layers can easily slide across each other, and so the application for this material, for example, is as a high temperature uh, lubricant used in automobile brakes. So that covers the binary, uh, simple binary structures. Here's an example of a ternary structure. Perovskite is the mineral of um, calcium titanium oxide. And so you see there's three different uh, elements and the unit cell we can understand in terms of a mixed uh, mixed layers of calcium and oxide in a close cubic close packing arrangement. Let's see here with uh, titanium in the octahedra. And the way I've drawn this, you can see the titanium in the octahedrons surrounded by oxygens. And then you alternate that with the calciums here. Um, so the titanium four plus is in, in the octahedrons. and the calcium and oxides form a cubic close pack lattice. And uh, there's a lot of examples of perovskite, different minerals and um, different materials. Uh, one example is a, a piezoelectric material. When you apply stress to this unit cell, it shifts the calcium uh, relative to the oxide, and so that shifts the, the charge distribution and creates an electric field. And so that's called piezoelectric material. 
and that's important in scanning tunneling microscopes, for example. Uh, perovskite structure is also the basis for the uh, so-called so high temperature superconducting uh, ceramic materials. So you see here's one perovskite unit cell, here's another, and here's another stacked, stacked on top of each other where you have uh, instead of calcium in the center you have yttrium and then two bariums and then you have coppers in the corners of this in the, in the corners and edges and then oxides filling in, in between so that creates uh, what's called the, the so-called 1-2-3 superconductor because the formula yttrium, barium so you could say one yttrium, two bariums, three coppers, oxides, um, and uh, we work with this in our lab. So that uh, covers the simple structures for ionic type compounds, and in our next lecture we'll learn how to predict and uh, understand, rationalize why compounds assume the particular lattice types.